What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Deals Garner bringing you people the very next episode of the oh so generically named Pokemon Reviews. As far as today's episode goes, we're going to be taking a look, look at what is arguably the most popular Pokemon fan creation to this date, which is none other than Pokemon Uranium. As always, everything that is mentioned here is my opinion and strictly my opinion only. If you by any chance do happen to disagree with my statements, feel free to let me know why in the comment section down below. So with that being said, enough of me rambling on, let's start with the review. Pokemon Uranium is a fan game that's been in development for a total of 9 straight years. Due to the many details and specifically the attention that was paid to the game itself, it's managed to catch the eyes of people that are not an active part of the ROM hack slash fan game community. I mean, it got covered by IGN for Pete's sake. Not only that, but it's been downloaded over 1.5 million times, which is mental. Unfortunately though, it got hit by cease and desist order from many lawyers of Nintendo America, and the development of the game came to a halt. There are a couple of potential reasons that would explain it having such a fate, which I'll go into detail later on in the video. But with that being said, that's enough with the background, let's move on to the features. Pokemon Uranium is essentially a Fakemon dominated Pokemon game that takes place in a new region known as Tandor, with a select few Pokemon present from Kanto to Kalos. It has a total of 200 Pokemon in its Pokédex, with 191 of them being attainable. Not only does this game have new Pokemon, but it also has new abilities that are introduced as well, along with new moves of course, which aren't next level broken and definitely does add to the experience I feel. Some of the already existing Pokemon even get a completely new evolution as well, some of which I really ended up liking. Speaking of evolution, Mega Evolution is also a feature in this game which many of the Fakemons have as well as some of the other already existing Pokemon that never had one as well. Lastly, it also has a completely new type which is the main focus of the game, Nuclear Types, which is super effective against all types save Steel and is weak to every single type save Nuclear itself. Its unprecedented final version goes up to the point where the main story ends along with very few bits being present in the post game. From an aesthetic perspective, it's an outright beauty. The tile sets along with the overworld sprites for the characters are all Gen 4 inspired and actually come pretty close towards being presented the same way it was in the actual Pokemon games. Not only that, but there is also custom music as well, and boy I gotta say, it's absolutely phenomenal. Most of the towns in the game have that quality of music that stays the same throughout the journey and it definitely did make things better for me. The main pieces of music made for the game were created by none other than one of my personal favorite composers in the Pokemon YouTube community, was formerly known as Electric Mudkip M- Dash, if that's how you properly pronounce it. I'll be sure to link her amazing channel in the description down below. Feel free to check her out. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the story. The story begins with a cutscene which talks about the protagonist's background. It addresses how his father, Kellen is a Pokemon Ranger, and his mother, Lucielle, is a nuclear physicist. It talks about how they, despite all the work they had, would still find time for each other and you. That is until the fateful day where things changed. Lucielle was working in the nuclear power plant as always, and her projects were going as planned until she noticed the reactor was leaking great amounts of heat. This would lead to a meltdown, and while everybody in the power plant had evacuated, Lucielle chose to stay behind, and instead of going outside, went into the bottom floor. Eventually, the power plant imploded after, and Lucielle wasn't seen or heard of since then. She was assumed to be dead. Such an incident would lead to Kellen's personality taking a 180 degree turn and make him cold choosing to dedicate all his time as a ranger, which would lead to him earning the title of the main chief, all the while abandoning his responsibilities as a father. In the time frame, you were raised by your auntie. Ten years have passed since then. You are now 13 years old and your auntie is getting too old to take care of you. And for that, you choose to start your own journey. Your rival is a childhood friend who's younger than you that goes by the name Theo. He's a very energetic kid whose ideals are fit for a person of his age. Of course, all of that comes with immaturity. He does not necessarily take losing well and usually ends up crying about it after. And I gotta say, that of all the fan games slash raw mags I've played for these past 5 years, 
this would undoubtedly be the best one I've seen. Because for the first time ever, it steps away from the generic direction of two people that grew up together, starting their journey at the same time, at the same age, and instead gives us the dynamic of a kid that looks up to his rival as an idol and desperately wants to reach his level, all the while letting his immaturities as a kid come in his way. The way they handled that and managed to develop his character from here on onwards was very well executed and something I'll definitely fondly remember of as the years go by. The main case behind the story is that throughout your journey, you end up seeing or hearing about nuclear plants scattered around Tandor which explode for unknown reasons that would introduce the main focus of the game, Nuclear Pokemon. Nuclear Pokemon are a result of normal Pokemon getting hit by radiation because of these explosions, which would turn them into mindless beasts that attack everything that's around them. For such a cliche concept, they executed it very well and with the kick-ass music that was playing in the background, really made me take them seriously. Finally, the background behind the region is solid. The legendaries, their myths, what they stand for, all of it left me very interested to find out more about them. It's honestly a shame to see that other than three legendaries, the others can be attained. Obviously with all these selling points, you think that there can be nothing wrong with the game. Unfortunately though, that is far from the case. And here's why. For one, due to the game being made in RGSS instead of the later versions, it suffers from a good chunk of lag in certain places, particularly some of the towns and especially double battles. Granted, compared to the earlier version, the final update does manage to fix most of that, but if you're a person that has quite a weak PC, the lag is going to take a lot away from your experience. I remember stopping midway much earlier on in this year because of that. I would definitely recommend playing this game using the cheat engine if I were you. Not only that, but there are still a couple of bugs present in the game that cause it to crash, some of which really pissed me off, so I would definitely recommend saving consistently. Lastly, even though most of the scenes were presented in such an amazing manner, there still are a bit of inconsistencies present that took away from the overall impact it could have provided. Here's an example. This section of the video contains spoilers, so if you're a person that does not want the story to be revealed and want to experience it for yourself, feel free to skip ahead in the timestamp mentioned right here. At one point in the game, you reunite with your rival in a town after winning your third gym badge. Just as you're about to have another battle, one of the nuclear plants very near to the city explodes, putting everything in a state of panic. To make matters worse, Theo's dad happened to be near the plant at that phase. Before he could react, the ranger takes you away from the city. This would lead to a cutscene with an unsettling version of Pallet Town's music playing, which sets your mood for how serious the situation really is only to lead to this happening. Yeah, talk about Buskill, am I right? It isn't, it isn't even a one-time thing either, as there are other phases in the game where, even though the situation was very well presented from strictly an aesthetic perspective, the lack of attention in some of the basic elements made things rather awkward. As far as my direct thoughts on the story goes, I would say it was quite well executed. For one, the pacing makes sure that every single focus of the game itself gets their needed screen time and doesn't feel like everything is overexposed. Theo would be a perfect example of exactly what I mean. His immature personality, being constantly told to stay on the sidelines because of his age, was something that I could actually relate a lot of my past to. Eventually, due to the explosion in the power plant causing his dad to go missing, Theo finally starts seeing the big picture and realizes that it's time for a change. Dedicating his journey to finding his dad again, he promises to get stronger and finally starts maturing, which I found to be quite heartwarming. Furthermore, the entire scuffle with the nuclear Pokemon and what was the cause of it was simply perfect, up until the end that is. You see, during near the end game, you finally find out the cause of all of this. The person behind the mask is a psychopath that goes under the name of Curie, with a legendary artificial Pokemon beside them, known as Uray. From there, a couple of instances take place between you and them, and boy was it perfectly executed. The background music, the presentation, all of it. It was insane! Eventually, you make your way to the Pokemon League and find out that there's no Elite Four, but rather an actual tournament, which left me very excited. 
Of course, since you are the main character, you reach the finals, and in a very cliche manner, so does your main rival. The stage has been set. Things are about to go down in the most epic way possible, up until, out of nowhere, this happens. One of the legendaries of Tandor in nuclear form comes out of nowhere and it's up to you to fight it. After beating it and turning it back to normal, out comes Curie for the final time. Except thanks to the legendary Pokemon, Urain managed to reach its ultimate form, known as the Gamma form. Eventually, the legendary you saved comes back to lend you its hand and you engage with Urain in its final battle. This would lead to Curie's armor to crack down and reveal that the person behind it was none other than your mother all along. While I did suspect it from the get-go, it certainly did leave me shocked. Eventually your father arrives and finds out about her and goes into a state of shock. What I didn't necessarily like was how the protagonist was just quiet during then and the reason I say that is because at many points in the game, the mindset of that said character is explored with his inner thoughts being mentioned. If they were to have such a feature, what was stopping them from presenting it in that exact situation as well? To top it off, here is Curie, unmasked, and it only takes your dad 3 to 4 sentences while staring at her, might I add, to realize that it was your mother all along. Eventually, after your dad takes her away from the site, Urain reappears with a voice to explain everything. It said that it needed to do all of that to absorb the radiation, as otherwise, it's risking losing its energy and dying, as well as explain why your mother ended up in such a state. It definitely did make me feel sympathy for it, but it didn't make me see Luciel in a positive light. Up until the final moments before they go into stasis, there is no mention of you or her husband as she's talking to Urain. It almost came off to me as she didn't care for you. You may think I'm nitpicking here, but with such great execution on most parts, the fact that these basic elements have been ignored is something that took a bit of fun out of the experience for me. In the end, it didn't feel like an actual triumphant moment for me, but rather left me confused, or rather awkward. On one hand, you just stopped the region's biggest problem, saved many lives. But on the other hand, you find out that the person who was trying to kill you was your mother all along, your dad couldn't stay around for your championship ceremony because of her, despite saying that you'd do whatever it takes to make up for the lost time and be there for you. In the end, I felt nothing. And that's quite frankly the only thing that I really didn't like about the end phase of the main story if I'm being honest. And as far as the post game goes, there is not much you can do unfortunately other than catching two legendaries, fighting some elite trainers and eventually having your faded rematch against Theo in the, in the Pokemon League. And it's a shame really because it appeared that there was a lot of content to come. Many questions that were left unanswered. Your mother never waking up from her coma and that's just how it's left at. There are many potential reasons as to why the game got hit by the cease and desist order from Nintendo. One of them would be the popularity it got or the fact that it was released near Sun and Moon's release date, or the fact that some fans apparently introduced a Wi-Fi system to the game itself. A total shame indeed. Despite the flaws present in the game, they are at its absolute minimum. I genuinely enjoyed most of my time playing this game, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody that's looking towards getting into the ROM hack slash fan game community itself. While I won't necessarily call it my favorite, the thing with Pokemon Uranium is that its fate is as similar to Pokemon Prism. It could have been the best, but due to the cease and desist orders from Nintendo, it couldn't reach that level. And that is why it is going to get a similar rating as well, in an 8.5 out of 10. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it for today's review. I hope each and every single one of you enjoyed watching this. Uh, and um, I'm generally sorry for taking so much time towards creating this, guys. Like. Um, in all honesty, I've been rather busy throughout this last uh, throughout this last week because like I've actually been beta testing a uh, Pokemon fan game that I will not dis that I will not um, disclose because the person requested me to do it so. So yeah, add that with the fact that there were other dedications for me to carry out as well, kind of hindered my progress. But either way, tr tr 
trust me when I tell you guys, I will not stop this anytime soon. I am genuinely happy to see that my first two episodes have been so well received so this far. This far, wow. So far, yes. Have been well received so far. And I promise to each and every single one of you that I'm going to continue doing my absolute best to consistently bring this out to you. And even if I don't end up uploading it in, you know, on a weekly basis, I can guarantee you that this series ain't gonna be stopping anytime soon. So, yeah. With that being said, thank you so, so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this in any way, feel free to hit that like button down below. Comment on what you think of this game. Follow me on Twitter. Sub to my channel. All that good stuff. And your friendly neighborhood star man will see you next time. Stay awesome. I love you guys. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.